To access the FET simulations, just simply go to phet.colorado.edu, then simulations, then click on physics, scroll down and click on the circuit construction kit DC. Then click on lab and you'll be taken straight into the FET DC circuit construction kit. I'll be constructing various circuits in investigating and exploring various concepts related to grade 10 to 12 electric circuits. I will begin with an exploration of the most basic principles and definitions of variables in electric circuits. Then delve deeper into concepts relevant to grade 11 and grade 12 electric circuits. Remember, although some of the work is taught separately in grade 10 and grade 11, however, most of the work is definitely examinable in grade 12. Although there isn't a single fixed method for constructing various circuits, however, there are a number of important observations to be on the lookout for so that your circuits actually work to do whatever they were meant to do. If it is to deliver a particular current to a light bulb, a resistor, or any other device while maintaining a particular voltage across it, so that the thing actually works, of course. Remember, there are countless applications of electric circuits in our day-to-day -day lives. On the left of the page, you have various components like a wire, a battery, light bulb, resistor, switch, fuse, and others. On the right, here you have options for showing current flow, electrons or conventional current flow, labels and values, then our voltmeter and ammeters. Lastly, at the bottom here, you have your advanced options where you can add wire resistivity and battery resistance. We'll leave them at zero or negligible for now. So, to build, you can just simply drag and drop any of these components where you want. You can rotate them whichever way you want and connect them, of course. Your wires can stretch. To connect your light bulbs, make sure you connect your wires at these two different terminals and not on the same terminal like this, which will cause a short circuit and blow up your battery. To adjust any of these components variables, simply click on the component and for your battery, you can adjust the EMF voltage here, for example. For your bulbs and resistors, adjust the resistance, of course. To measure the voltage, simply drag the voltmeter and connect the leads across whatever point you want to measure in your circuit. And for your ammeter, you can just place this anywhere along the circuit to know the current flowing at that point in your circuit. To disconnect, simply click on a terminal, then click on the scissors icon. This ammeter can be placed at any point in your circuit as well. So, we will begin with constructing a basic circuit that will help us define and investigate the potential difference, current, and the resistance in our electric circuits. The potential difference can be defined as the electrical work done in moving a unit of charge all the way through the circuit. It is commonly referred to as the voltage and it's measured in volts. As you can see, the higher the voltage, the more the electrical work done in moving each unit of charge across our circuit. Of course, this then causes the charges to move quicker, which then brings us to the current. Current can be defined as the rate of flow of electrical charge. Now I will connect an ammeter in our circuit and as you can see, the faster the rate of flow of these charges, the higher the current reading on our ammeter. Current is measured in amperes, also commonly referred to as amps. Then moving on to resistance. We can simply define the resistance as the opposition, hence resistance, to the flow of electric current in a conductor. And as you can see, the higher the resistance, the slower the rate of flow of charge and hence the smaller the current in the circuit. A series connection is a connection in which there is only one common point of contact between the components connected. Therefore, this battery is connected in series with this ammeter, which is in turn connected in series with this first light bulb, which is also connected in series with this second light bulb, 
and the second light bulb is also connected in series with this third light bulb. Since all the components in the circuit are connected in series and there is only a single path for all our electrons or charges to flow through, we can therefore refer to the circuit as a series circuit. In a series circuit, the total current flowing out of the battery will be the same as the current flowing through all the series components in the circuit. In this case, the light bulbs will all be having the same current flowing through them. Although the current in a series circuit is the same throughout, however, the voltage will be divided across all the series components. Hence, a series circuit is also commonly known as a voltage divider. As you can see, the total voltage across the battery will be equal to the sum total of all the voltages across the light bulbs. Moving on to the total resistance. The total resistance in a series circuit will also be the sum of all the series resistors and can be calculated through the formula R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. In a parallel circuit, the total current will now be equal to the sum of all the currents flowing through the parallel branches in your circuit. The total current, for example, flowing out of this battery will be equal to the sum of the currents flowing through the first bulb, plus the current flowing through the second bulb, plus the current flowing through the third bulb. Hence, a parallel circuit is also commonly known as a current divider. However, in a parallel circuit, the voltage across all the parallel components in the circuit will be equal and the same. As you can see, the voltage across the battery is the same as the voltage across the first bulb, which is the same as the voltage across the second bulb, which is also the same as the voltage across the third bulb. In a parallel circuit, to add up the total resistance of the parallel resistors, use the formula 1 over Rp is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Unlike with the series circuit, adding a parallel resistor effectively decreases the overall resistance of the circuit. Next, we'll have a look into Ohm's law. It was a German physicist, Josh Ohm, that first stated that the potential difference across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the conductor at constant temperature. This simply means in an electric circuit like this one, if we increase the potential difference across the ends of this conductor, then the current flowing through this conductor will also increase. And similarly, if we decrease the voltage, then the current also decreases. This is true at constant temperature because, remember, most electrical conductors are metals. Copper, for example. And remember, metals will expand or constrict due to changes in temperature. And this affects the cross-sectional area of the conductor, which then makes it bigger or smaller. And obviously, this will affect the overall resistance of the conductor, which then, of course, also affects the current flowing through the conductor. So, for the observation of Ohm's law, a constant temperature is very, very important. All this gives us the equation V is equal to I times R, where V is the voltage, I the current, and R the resistance, which is also the constant of proportionality. Now, we will take it a step further and explore a more realistic conception of a battery. Please note, under a topic titled Electrochemistry, you will learn how DC batteries are simply electrochemical cells, also commonly known as galvanic cells. And you will learn how in these cells, electrons will be flowing through electrodes, connecting wires and salt bridges, which then offer some resistance to the flow of charge and current, only this time it is inside the very battery itself. Thus, the conception of the battery internal resistance. To illustrate this, I will click on this advanced button, then adjust my internal resistance to 1 ohm. Now, note how the external voltage is no longer the same as the battery EMF voltage. This is because the battery's internal resistance is now effectively in series with the battery, 
And because of this, as mentioned earlier, as a series resistor, it will divide the total voltage and cause a voltage drop across the battery. From this, therefore, we can tell that the EMF will be equal to the external voltage plus the internal voltage. At this point, I will construct a couple of circuits and explore the accompanying questions taken from previous exam question papers. This is the first circuit given. I will read out the questions, then explore the answers to the various questions, taking you through every step of the way. For the first part of the question, the switch is open. The first question reads, write down the reading on V1. This is the voltmeter connected across the battery in the circuit diagram given. And to get that reading, we can just simply drag our voltmeter and connect its leads across the battery. And as you can see, the reading on the voltmeter is 24 volts. This is because all the energy stored in the battery is remaining in the battery due to the open circuit. The battery is not doing any work in moving any of the charges across the circuit. The next question reads, write down the reading on this ammeter. The reading on this ammeter is 0 amps, as you can see. This is due to the switch being open, which makes an open circuit and there is no complete path for the electrons or charges to flow through. Because there is no flow of charge, therefore there is no current in the circuit with the switch open. The switch is now closed. The questions that follow are, calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. For this, we will have to consider that we have one bulb which is connected in series and this parallel combination of these other two bulbs, which are clearly connected in parallel because there is no longer a single path for the electrons to flow. So for this, RT will be equals to RS which is this one series bulb plus RP, the parallel combination of these two bulbs. To add up RP, we can use the formula 1 over RP is equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Therefore, 1 over RP is equals to 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, which will be equals to 2 over 8. But remember, we want to get RP, not 1 over RP. Therefore, RP will be equals to the reciprocal of 2 over 8, which will be equals to 8 over 2, which will be equals to 4 ohms. So the parallel combination is equal to 4 ohms. Alternatively, you can calculate the parallel resistance of these two bulbs using the formula RP is equals to the product of R1 times R2 divided by the sum of the two resistors R1 plus R2. So in this case, we'll have RP is equal to 8 times 8 all divided by 8 plus 8, which will be equal to 64 divided by 16, which is also equal to 4 ohms. Therefore, the total resistance RT will be equal to RS, which is equal to 8 ohms, plus RP, which is equal to 4 ohms, and therefore RT is equal to 12 ohms. The next question is, calculate the reading on voltmeter V2. And this is the voltmeter connected across this series bulb. And when we connect our voltmeter across this series bulb, we measure 16 volts. To calculate this, we can use this ammeter reading, which reads 2 amps, and therefore the current flowing through this bulb will also be equals to 2 amps because it is in series with this ammeter and the current in series will be the same. Then of course, to get the voltage across this bulb, we can use the formula V is equals to I times R, where I is equals to 2 and R is equals to 8, therefore the voltage across this bulb will be equals to 2 times 8, which will then be 16 volts. To calculate this current, you can use the formula from Ohm's law once again. Because this is our total current flowing out of the battery, take note to use the total voltage divided by the total resistance. Remember, we already have calculated our total resistance to be 12 ohms. Therefore, 
I total will be equals to V total which is 24 divided by R total which is once again 12 and therefore I total will be 24 divided by 12 which is equals to 2 amps. It is interesting to note that the total current is then divided across this parallel network of these two bulbs. And because these bulbs are identical, each having 8 ohms, then the current flowing through each one of these two bulbs will be the same and identical, each being 1 amp, 1 amp each.